It's important for a player to have an agent to, to, to try and help him out in terms of uh, contracts and stuff. Because with this uh, if you don't have someone to help you, you want to sign a level five years, you can no sign it three years or no, two years. Some of the players, they don't read. Maba the sign a sign. He didn't read. So rather, it's much easier to have an agent to help you out. But then the agent has to be honest, because some of the agents now, uh, they look after themselves more than the player. The, the unions, they do help Magunama disputes most of the time. It's good to have them. But then I would never advise a player just to be a player and an agent. If you don't have an agent, then you need to register with the, the football union because then they will help you out. If you want to sign for a club, uh, Bona, they will play like their agents. But you have to have someone, because I was a young kid in football. You only know how to play football. You don't know contracts. Enjoy this episode with Ntlantla Shabalala and Jasmine. We want to take football to another level, not by playing. Yes. But uh, the, these conversations of uh, uh, players' uh, well being, uh, how to invest, how do they look after their players as agents, they will tell us because a uh, reputable agent. My name is Jasmine Matlakhani, a football business manager, looking after the interest of players, um, both in, in corporate space and, and football contracts. Yeah. He represented one of the, the, the most famous Shabalala as well yeah. in the country, yeah. the scorer of the first yeah. goal for Bafana in the World Cup, World Cup yeah. against Mexico. Yeah. Thank but, you. but he runs a, you run a tight ship, a very small... I call it a boutique. I modeled my concept such that I don't have too many of them. Running this kind of a system, you have to have the rules. There's only one man in that house and that's me. And, and my way or highway, and that's the only way that these guys are going to thrive. But also managed in a, in a, in a iron fist kind of a, of a way. But and, and you know, this, this my way or the highway offends me a bit in what I do. And I think this is one of the issues that we have differed with Duprache's men when it comes to the role of a player and how we see it and the role of an agent. Which, what then forms this relationship? Tlantla Shabalala is my name. I'm the Secretary General of the South African Football Players Union and a former player, played for Ajax and Amazulu. And I've called it a day. Now I look after the interests of the players, fundamentally protecting and defending their rights. Every time there's, uh, there's money issues, a, a player and the team, if there are money issues, he's forever jumping in. He's not scared. No, he's to very vocal, it, though. Yeah, to tell it like it is. Yeah, yeah he's vocal. <laughs> he fights with everybody. Yeah, he's, he's vocal. with me, he wants me. This one, you must put him in the ring there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the way he works is the way he was playing. I don't think I really chose to be what I am today. I think what I am today chose me. Because if I can just give a background, I, I played for Ajax. I mean, salaries were paid on time, signing on fees were paid on time. We did not experience anything or any foul play for management. But on the basis that I had friends who play for other teams and I understood exactly what they are going through. One, that motivated me to join the union and become part of the union whilst I was still a player. And I followed uh, the things that were happening and I saw that there's really no change in terms of what happens in the life of the players, what they're faced with and all of that. And I grew very passionate to be the voice of change, to come back and say, this is what we want to do in the game. Change it for the future generation, make sure that we clean all the ills and we make sure that football just becomes a game of entertainment that is played. It's just my passion to make sure that the rights of people are respected, to make sure that our football space is clean of all the corrupt and malpractices, so that it becomes very pure. Because if that happens, it means we have a best Bafana Bafana. I mean, we are rated as the best league, uh, one of the when top 10 in the world. And if that is the case, it means that as Bafana, we must be ranked somewhere as well within football. But as things currently stand, 
we don't. And why is that? Because we have depressed footballers. You cannot maximize on the potential of a player if that player comes to entertain the world and the nation, but that player is depressed and is going through a lot because of maladministration, mistreatment, and all other sorts of things that you can talk about. It's all about wanting to change the lives of the footballers. It's about introducing psychology to the footballers, looking at internally at what their problems are, what they are the issues, you know, to help them financially, to also help them with their family issues. Football is all around a game that requires a lot of happiness and passion. But I could not stand and see my colleagues entertain everybody else, but themselves are broken. And I think I, I, from that point on, I realized that because at least I had a, you know, been to school and understand how, how these things understand how these things work, and I, I couldn't stand the fact that so someone has to go through this because he's is is now conf, confined to the situation, and um, when I unfortunately you know broke my knee and could not play anymore, the first thing that I did was to represent players was to say this is what I'm going to do to make sure that when I sit on that table and I negotiate a deal, it's going to be exactly what the deal must be and what goes into the bank. When I got into the space, I found that it was very much, you know, white dominant space. And I was like, okay, wait. So you've got very predominant space of white and very big number of black players, which means the ratio is wrong in terms of, you know, people that are representing these players. I don't think they understand where they come from, who they are, what they go through, as, as Ntanfa is mentioning. So my space to come in was to say, okay, to then fix that or get involved in something like that, you can then go with the same notion of having 500 players. I will never remember some of them. Or nine out of 10, I won't even know whose contract is coming to an end. So which is why then I then got to a space where I said, listen, let me have few that can be well-educated, well-looked after, well-treated, so that then this thing can snowball into them communicating what they're going through inside the stable to to their colleagues, like, you've got colleagues that are playing football. So even if you are in my space and there's 20 of you, you've got players that are playing for other teams, which means they are in a stable where they are 400 or 200 or whatever. But the more they speak about the treatment and what we do and how I do things and whatever, it then opens up your eyes to say, but, you know, here in, in our stable, we don't get that kind of a treatment. We only meet three years later when, when it's time to, to do contracts. So that boutique store, which I call... It's purely just the, the, the slang word to say it's very few of them, and I keep it that way. And by the way, remember, some of them are retiring in between. So as they retire, if I have the Comedisa retiring, then I add a young player coming in. If Happy Jella retires or Pio Shabala retires, I still add. So, But people still remember those players being Jasmine's players because they've been with me for 15, 18 years. And the reason why they we stay longer with each other is purely for that reason, that the attention, the... The, the support, the, the, everything that needs to be done is done. So there's no, there's no half measure, there's no, everything is done, is done properly. And that's the reason why this concept of professionals was done in that way. We've had, uh, we've had different, uh, I think, experiences with agents. I, for one, I struggle. I mean, they would come and ask uh, that they're looking for a team, can't we make a plan or recommend an agent? It becomes very difficult. And this is based on the level of dishonesty that I've experienced. And now, if I'm going to recommend an agent to a player, and that player is done dirty, it simply reflects back to me. So that space is a little bit, I think it has been tempered with far too many times. Do we still have credible agents? I believe we do. I mean, nobody is perfect. I mean, even in the organization that I work in, there are still complaints about some of the things that we do. And you find that those are the most excellent things that we do. So complaints will never divorce themselves from the human beings. But insofar as the trust level, 
I think I've got a problem somewhere, somehow. Few credible, there are notable, it's okay. I mean, I can give you a typical example now. I think all of us know of the troubles that have been happening at TTM, the non-payment of salaries and all. At the heart of that, an agent asks a player for a contribution, and this is a player who has not been paid for three or four months. I mean, I'm talking about it now. It's something that we're uh, investigating and dealing with, but agent did it all a salary from the players. And he's got about six or seven, your colleague, yes, six or seven of them at the team. And he even writes, Gadi, what's up, Zuremon, when are you paying me? And this is a player that has not been paid for three months consistently. He's playing in the NFT, probably 7,000, 8,000. We know that they're exploited. And until we really deal and sort out the issue of regulation in the issues of the agents, in the issues of also entry level salaries, we're going to have problems when it comes to such. But imagine I've not been paid. For three months, four months, Chessman sends me a message and he says to him, can't am I not getting my portion? Why is he getting his portion from me in the first place? Because an agent negotiates and he gets the commission from the club. Yeah. But la, I was very shocked. So it means you are useless as an agent. If you are going to negotiate a deal of a player and you are unable to then source out your commission from the club, now you are going after these boys and you are taking from the little that they have and you leave them with no choice because of what he has spoken about. I've given you a favor. I've done you a favor. You were no work with toilet it up now on the basis that I've secured employment for you. You need to look after me. It doesn't come for free. But at what cost? And I think this issue sometimes we need to really unpack. That's why I give Willega um, the importance of education touches. I can give you a typical example now. Saleng, hot property. And you might find that Saleng a month or two ago, somebody approached him that never knew him. And Saleng was got a contract with Pirates probably for three years. It's done, it's secured. Nothing that the agent can do right now. Yeah. But on the basis of the lack of knowledge and education, the person who just came in now and jumped in the ship, he's already charging a fee for Saleng on a monthly basis. And Hana knowledge, and he probably contributes that particular amount of money every month because we were taught as players that how nearly agent, you must pay an agent. And we've always said this, and it always shocks me even, Prachez, when I go to teams and I ask them, are agents taking money from you? And most of the players would say, yes, I do pay a particular commission to an agent. And I say, it needs to stop right now. This is the criminality that yes. we talk about in a game. It can't happen. And about Prachez, I mean, being long in the game and having looked after the players that they've looked after, they are credible individuals, as we understand. They probably have their own problems. But now you see how the space is tainted by these fly-by-night agents, as I would have said. They come in, they are hungry, they've got one or two relations with the team, they throw three or four players, then they come back and they collect their monthly subscription, which becomes a salary. It's not how it's supposed to be. Education must come to play. But there's a risk as well, because agency then stands and it dies a slow death on the basis that la baba moshayo, and eventually it becomes a polluted space. How do you then tell the difference between a good and a bad agent, you know? I mean, it's easy. I, I think, I, think um, I, I like the part where, you know, Danda talks about players not being aware. That for me, it's, it's even diabolical for a player not to know what must happen with this contract. Because um, like any other person who goes to get a, a, an employment, you, you first want to understand, you know, what...